We are talking about finding support within the foster community. My goodness, I was a little bit reluctant to find people that are also fostering because, well, I don't know why, but I branched out, I reached out to people that were, it was suggested that I reach out to, and let me tell you what, I have met some of the most amazing people, one person in particular, and that is what I wanna share with you guys today. This is the story of baby Z, and really why I'm around all of this baby stuff here. I'm gonna share with you guys everything right now. Please click the like button, hit the bell icon, and click subscribe. One reason that I started this channel was because there was like no people talking about fostering and even less people that were single men or LGBTQ identifying men that um, are fostering or adopting talking about their stories. And I really scoured YouTube to find this and I just could not find it. And if you want to get even more nuclear micro, I couldn't find any single gay men that are fostering. I could find couples that were um, adopting on YouTube and that were documenting their journeys, but the foster sy system is, it feels like nobody talks about it. So as I continue to document my journey here, I wanted to share with you guys this story about Baby Z. Baby Z is a child, a young toddler, who her mother and father we're working with the same foster agency that I'm working with, Aviva Family Children's Services here in Los Angeles. Well, all of this stuff here, all of these baby items were donated to me through someone who had been working with the same foster agency. Stick along with me, okay? This can get a little tricky, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep you hanging in there. One day I was talking to the coordinator at the foster agency that I'm working with. And I said, hey, I'm gonna go purchase a stroller. Is it okay if I get one of those strollers that just clicks from the stroller right into the car seat uh, car? And she stops me and she says, Kevin, don't buy anything. I was like, okay, I won't buy anything, What? why? And she says, there is a woman, she was going to be fostering with us, but then she got pregnant and is no longer gonna do the foster uh, route right now and she has all of this stuff that she wants to donate. And I was like, okay. And she said, you know, I think she has like a crib and a stroller. And I was like, okay, that's great. Let's, let's check it out. So the next day I end up at this woman's house in Burbank and it turns out that she donated all of this stuff to me. But the really amazing part of it is she kept saying, oh, this stuff has really good energy. It has really good vibes. You know, I, I hope you, you know, you'll keep it and it'll serve you well. Well, these items were donated to her from someone else who was fostering with the same agency as mine. That is where Baby Z comes in because Baby Z is who originally used all this stuff. So this is like three families down. I'm that third family. So you have Baby Z, and then you have the person who, do who donated this, these items to me, and then you have me. The special part about all of this is that as I'm going through my home study process, I just finished up my last home study meeting, and next week I have my in-home inspection, and then I will be finished this entire process, and I will have my approval. My last home study uh, session, my the social worker at the agency, she says, well, Kevin, there's a woman I want you to meet. And her name is Michelle. And call her. You guys will get along well. You have a lot of the same things about you. You'll, you guys need to talk to each other about this process because she actually has adopted a child that she was fostering in the, uh, in the process with us. So I did not know who Michelle was. I just knew that the social worker that I'm working with told me I should give her a call. So days go by and I finally called her. And she says to me, 
we're talking and I said, oh yeah, well, all of this stuff that I have was donated to me. And she said, oh yeah, you know what? I think Kelsey told me about you. And I said, wait a minute, do you know who donated this stuff to me? And, and she, I said, was her name, and I don't want to say this woman's name, was her name Becky, we'll say Becky. And she goes, yes, I do know her. Do you know that I donated all that stuff to Becky? And I was like, wait a minute, what? No, I had no idea. She said, yeah, that was baby Z's um, baby stuff because obviously, you know, her daughter has had grown out of all of these things. And it was just really cool because as I was, had already been, you know, Michelle had already told me about baby Z and her story and how she came to them. And it was just wonderful to hear her story about how everything aligned perfectly, how they were meant to have baby Z, how the relationship between her and the bio family just worked out so well, and all of the good energy that was really like put into these items. And I think that's important because as you go through this process, I am finding that fostering and adopting, and I think even surrogacy can be, can feel like this very lonely process. And I would be interested even hearing from women who have biological children and they're carrying their children and, you know, the fathers, I would be interested in knowing, do you guys sometimes feel like it's an isolating process? But I know for sure that fostering can seem really isolating and can be really isolating because there's you're like on hyperdrive. There's so much to do, yet so much waiting that happens. And there's a lot of preparing and, and not knowing what you're preparing for. So for example, like I have like different, even just like bibs here, right? And I tried to get pretty gender neutral colors because you, I don't know, or am I gonna have a baby girl or a baby boy? You know, you can't buy anything that is really age specific because you don't know the age that you're gonna get. You can definitely tell them an age range, and I did, but babies newborn to age one, man, newborn to three months is drastically different. Three to six, six to nine, and nine to 12 are all different sizes, and. They can play with different things and not other things. And there's a lot to it that if you don't have a support network, it's going to be really difficult. And that's why I was so happy that I got on the phone with Michelle and I learned about the story of where all of these things come from and the love that they, that Michelle and her husband have given to baby Z and how baby Z is this wonderful, vibrant girl. And I could hear her on the phone playing and exploring and just being a little girl. And she's so, like she's got so much life to her. And I could just tell from the phone call, I could tell from Michelle's, the way she talks about the, her experience with this, this little girl. And to know that, like to me, there's no coincidence that she donated this stuff to Becky, we're calling her Becky. And then Becky, after five years of trying to have a child, Becky got pregnant with twins. And then the day I call my social worker to say, I'm gonna go um, pick, up, pick up a stroller. She says, oh wait, no, this woman's looking to donate all this stuff. That's not a coincidence to me. To me, that's like divine intervention. Like I've got you taken care of. And I'll be honest, a couple days ago, I was just feeling a little nervous, a little scared. And I love that, like Michelle was telling me on the phone, she said, if you don't feel scared during this process, then I would be a little worried. This, this phone call that I had with her and learning this story of all of these items, she was able to send me photos of baby Z in this and in this rocker and in the bassinet and it was just like this little piece of comfort that I needed in this moment to know like everything's good, everything's okay. Like this is, this is energy flowing. And this is why I think it's important to have a support network because fostering can be lonely, it can be isolating and there's so much negative 
talk around the foster system and there's a lot of horror stories and I think it's going to take people being louder and more expressive and more positive about this entire experience for us to for people to feel positive about the foster system and one thing that I think is very important which I've I've all I've mentioned many times is that my reason for doing this channel was to document my story you know you guys will never see the baby's face that I get placed with maybe if, if there's a video I'll blur there and blur them out if I have to hold them or something but you will never see their face you will never know their story you won't even know their real name because that's not my job to tell and that's not even what this story this this channel is about this channel is being created or was created so that people like myself that are looking for answers about the foster community can have another resource, just another resource. I've already had people reach out to me. I've already had people reach out and say, hey, single men at that, which is amazing, say, hey, look, I've been wanting to foster and I'm, I've been watching your videos and can you tell me more? Can you tell me what this is like, you know? And it's so cool to already just you don't always know who's watching. That's one thing I've learned in life. You don't always know who is watching the things you're doing and how it's impacting them. I think that's really cool. So I, I just wanted to share that. And I think it's wonderful that as my child, when they come and they outgrow these items, you know, and they're no longer the right size or right age for these items, I can donate these things. And I can pass these things on and say, you're getting items that are full of love and full of energy that is so vibrant and positive. I'm so happy that I've connected with Michelle and others in, in the foster space. So I encourage you guys, if you're watching these videos, to share these videos. If you watch on Facebook, share it because you don't know who can't conceive and is thinking about fostering and doesn't know what to do and doesn't have resources. So make sure you, you know, you like these, you comment, tell these algorithms that people need this information way more than we need TikTok dances. But anyway, that's a whole nother rabbit hole I won't go down. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Thanks for listening. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments about my experience and my journey, just put them in the comments below. I do go through and I do comment whenever someone does leave a message. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.